I'm Kit, I work at Agent Smart, and I have four tips to help you beat that overwhelming feeling we can quite often feel at work. Now, I personally have to be vigilant for this feeling. I am, find it very hard to concentrate. I'm super sensitive to distraction, so I have to find really ridiculously, <laughs> like people think I'm crazy, the kind of things I have to do to keep me focused on an individual task. But I have to create all of these ways just to keep me focused. So these are my four tips to stop yourself from all of the cognitive switching, the task switching, and to beat overwhelm in your place of work. Number one, make sure you make time at the start of your day to plan your day. So I always make time in the morning for a bit of free associative time, whether it's even just 15 minutes, to go through everything I need to do that day, write it all down on individual post-its and have it down in front of me on my desk so I can get an overview of everything that needs to be done. What I used to do, which I'm doing less at the moment, but it really helped when my job changed, is I started doing effort impact uh, scales every day to drill into my brain what was the most, what, what my priorities were in my job. It's not always obvious. So this is how I do an effort impact or an impact effort, whichever way you want to call it, spectrum. Along the bottom you have 0 to 10 of how much effort you imagine the task in question is going to take. And from 0 to 10 going up the left axis, you have the impact. Now you don't always know the amount of impact something is going to have, but the impact you assume something's going to have. And then what you do is you take the post-its that you thought of all the things you're going to do that day and you put them, you decide on the amount of effort it's going to take and you decide on the amount of impact you believe it's going to have. And then once you've done that, you'll have all of your tasks across the spectrum and you'll have a better idea of what's going to take no effort and have loads of impact, what's going to take loads of effort and have no impact, and you can start to prioritize based on this. Now, after a while, you're not going to have to do this every single day. You're going to start to develop a really strong idea of what roles, what tasks within your role are incredibly impactful and take no effort and so on and so forth. So this is something that I like to do when a, when a load of new tasks come um, under my responsibility. So it's going to get to the point where you're able to free associate, think of all these things, get it all down on post-its, and you're not going to need to do the impact effort. For me, it kind of trained me into a more uh, impact, well, impactful and more efficient way of thinking. Now, after I've done that, I, get, I often get rid of a load of tasks that simply don't need to be done, the ones that are low impact and high effort. And then I start to, I take the post-its back off, but I arrange them in order of the things that are going to, um, uh, have the most impact because <laughs> the, 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 the scale just told me. So I do those ones first. What that does for your sense of clarity and satisfaction um, and your stress levels, it can really calm you down because quite often you might, it gives you a good sense of what you need to be doing. It also gives you a much better sense of which order to do them in. There's nothing worse than that day where you're doing loads of little things that aren't as necessary and you're putting off that thing that's really necessary. That can really give you a sense of just like, ah! Okay, the next thing, I'm obsessed with timers. Like obsessed. Like I have to put a timer on all the time to stop my brain from wandering when I'm working on a task. One of the most popular is, um, is a system called the Pomodoro timer. It's kind of ridiculous that this thing even has a name. All it is is you set the timer for 25 minutes do, ta do work for 25 minutes and then take a five or 10 minute break. The fact that someone called it Pomodoro and like made a little tomato timer, for me is absolutely bonkers. For me, it's really nice to know, or nice isn't the word, it's very uh, satisfying for me to set a time limit to a task. The task could literally be as simple as writing an email. Sometimes if I'm feeling very overwhelmed and I just need to zero in, knowing that this thing will take 10 minutes, setting something for 10 minutes and just blocking out that time and I know I'm not going to go over there or get myself a drink or check my phone in that 10 minute period, it can really help me just think, this is where I am, this is what I'm doing right now and this is all I'm doing right now. So timers, essentially it's like live time boxing. People always used to tell me you need to time box what you do in your calendar. It's never worked for me ever. I, I, I like schedule, I like routine, that's fine. But time boxing in ahead of time, I found it quite tough the way that things get thrown at you in modern workplaces and so on and so forth. So I prefer to kind of live time box. I like to set timers all the time 
to keep me on a task. It really helps me. Timers. Number three, take a break. I really like this one, and I have to say, this, is, this can be quite tough depending on your workplace. At AJ and Smart, it's not a problem. It's kind of understood as a way you have to do things. And I like to take unapologetic, like real breaks. Now that might sound mad, but what I like to say is I just don't like, I don't, I refuse to feel guilty for taking breaks. And this is something that in some workplaces, you may be made to feel terrible for, going for a 15 minute walk or standing up and smiling and walking around as if you're actually doing some thinking. Who would, who would have thought you'd ever do that in a workplace? You're meant to look like you're working all the time with a furrowed brow. All of that is the worst. That needs to stop immediately. You need to take unapologetic, real breaks. If you're watching this video at work, in a way, you are kind of taking a break at work because you're doing something like to do with your learning rather than an actual task. So good on you, you should be doing that, it's great. Okay, number four, don't check your phone. In fact, don't do something else when you've told yourself you're gonna do a thing. The reason for this isn't the obvious. It's not that, well, if I check my phone, I'm stopping doing the thing, that's time away. There's actually a more insidious thing going on here that's a real problem. When you move away, when you skip away and you check your phone or you check um, your favorite website or whatever the thing is, what you're actually doing is something that has uh, longer term repercussions. Now, if you're focused on one task, you're building the ability to focus on tasks. It's like a muscle, concentration is like a muscle. And the reason I'm saying this is because I really, really had to work on it myself. When you look over at your phone, when you're meant to be doing this, you're atrophying your ability to concentrate. This is talked about in depth in Cal Newport's book, Deep Work. He talks about how when you're in that queue for that thing and you're bored and you check your phone, it's actually hindering your ability later that day to concentrate on an on a in-depth task. The best thing to do is, I'm not saying don't check your phone, what I'm saying is maybe try when you have that need, that, that urge to check your phone or to check that website, think, no, I'm gonna set a timer, I'm not gonna check it for 20 minutes. Well, the things that can help are quite obvious, you would have heard them before, put it in your pocket or put it in your bag or in another room, all of those things do help. But try and increase the amount of time before checking something else and yeah, build the muscle of concentration and focus. Okay, so now what do you do? You have all this free time. If you were like me and you only spent a quarter of the time working and 75% of the time jumping between tasks, what do you do with all this free time? Well, first of all, you're gonna have a lot more energy, which is gonna mean that you're gonna have energy to smile, which is gonna be amazing. I am now smiling 75% more since applying these principles. Thank you for watching. Um, I'm not in a lot of these videos, it's mainly Brittany and John, but it's always nice when I do one. But it still means that I want you to like and subscribe just as much as they do, in some ways more. So if you could um, like and subscribe, that would make me extremely happy. Cheerio.